look at some of the works of the Impressionists. To the first observer, it just looks sort of blurry. Well, people who are nearsighted see the world without their glasses as sort of blurry. So somewhere along the line, some people thought that, well, maybe just the Impressionists were just a bunch of people with nearsightedness. When Paul Cezanne exhibited in the very first Impressionist show, there was an interesting quote from an art critic who was so uh, shocked with the, the look of this, they said he must have a diseased retina. He's created this whole new form of art because his eyes must be so poor. Similarly, people look at uh, the works of artists like El Greco and Giacometti and uh, Modigliani, and all of those artists would paint or do sculptures in a very elongated, exaggerated sort of fashion. Again, someone wondered, uh, well, gosh, I wonder if they have some sort of astigmatism. And astigmatism is a condition of the eye where the curvature of the eye is not perfectly spherical, and it causes blurring in one direction as opposed to another. And it turns out that Impressionism is way more than just an eye condition. I mean, it's a, a, a revolutionary movement in art in France in the late 1800s. And, you know, glasses were widely available then. There was not any such thing as somebody that went without glasses. Edgar Degas was really one of the founding fathers of French Impressionism. He suffered from a loss of vision in one eye in his early 30s, and he was basically legally blind in both eyes uh, by about his mid-30s. He lost vision in the macula, the centermost part of the retina that's responsible for our fine, detailed vision. And this shows up in his works where early he does these exquisite paintings of girls in the ballet school, for example, and, and he would paint that over and over and over again. But then there's some very late Degas uh, pastels where he's painting the same theme, a, a, a ballet dancer. But you can tell that the contrast between his earlier style and the later style is just a lot more coarse. The details are kind of lost, and it's very evident when you compare those two works that he's lost vision. You ask someone about Impressionism and everyone seems to gravitate towards Monet. Well, Monet ends up having cataracts late in his life. And these cataracts develop in roughly the 19-teens to 1920s. And cataract surgery was possible, but it was not nearly as sophisticated as it is now. He eventually, after seeing six ophthalmologists, ends up having cataract surgery, but up until that point, we can kind of see a gradual deterioration in his vision. A cataract will absorb blue, violets, and greens, and so it leaves the world sort of a muddy color. As Monet, in fact, after his cataract surgery, complained bitterly. He talked about how the colors were exaggerated, and he couldn't quite get used to the fact that he was actually seeing real colors now, and he'd been so acclimated to seeing yellows and browns. Nothing probably illustrates this better than something that he would paint over and over, which is the, the little Japanese footbridge at Giverny. And there are early works of this from around 1900. He paints them. The water lilies are beautifully reflecting in the pond, and there's just really exquisite detail. And even his brush strokes, are, there's different colors rendered just within a single brushstroke. And then we get to a, a much later work in about 1922. He paints that same uh, Japanese footbridge and now the colors are way off. They're yellows and browns and very muddy because of a very, very thick cataract. And he's looking through these cataracts and painting through this. And that work from 1922 really reflects his poor vision that he was struggling with at the time. He 
sort of finally ends up recovering in around 1925. He finished the water lilies and, and he's sort of back to his old style that, that all of us have sort of come to love. The idea that Impressionism might have been born out of uh, just a need for glasses is, is probably pretty inaccurate. These are sort of conscious, artistic decisions and not an eye condition. 